Konnichiwa. My name's Andy. Welcome to Uzumaki Garage. In a previous episode, I removed the gearbox to get it reconditioned, but before I reinstall it, I'm going to replace the rear main seal on the engine, the flywheel, and the clutch. And along the way, I'll fabricate some special tools to help me do this job exactly the way Honda wants it to be done. To undo the bolts that hold the flywheel to the crankshaft, I need a 12.17mm socket. The bolts have a very shallow head, so to maximise the contact between them and the socket, I'm going to grind off the socket's inner chamfer. The service manual says, remove the flywheel bolts in a crisscross pattern in several steps. So to do it that way, a special tool is needed to stop the flywheel turning while loosening the bolts gradually with a breaker bar. It's easy to make the special tool, but as my car's on jack stands, there's not much room to swing a breaker bar. So I'll use a rattle gun, as I won't be reusing the old flywheel anyway. But if you don't want to make this special tool, a rattle gun can normally remove the flywheel bolts without the flywheel moving too much. Now I'll make the special tool, which is really just a simple bracket to go between these two bolt holes. I know some people like to press in the new seal using the old seal and a hammer, but I'm trying to find something that'll press all around the new seal at the same time. If I had a lathe, I could make a perfect size sleeve to press in the seal, but as I don't, I'll have to improvise. Now I'll install the alignment pins that the pressure plate sits on. They've been in the freezer for a while to shrink them down a fraction. Then I give them a tap with the brass hammer 
before using the hydraulic press to push them in. Now I'll make another tool that I'll need to use when I torque down the clutch pressure plate. In hindsight, I really only needed to make this tool as it'll work on both the clutch plate and the flywheel. The test fit is good, but I'll need to space out the new tool with some flat washers so it lines up with the flywheel teeth perfectly. I'll be using some medium strength thread locker on the new flywheel bolts. I'm cleaning the new flywheel bolts with brake cleaner and blowing them dry with compressed air. And now I'm cleaning the crankshaft's bolt holes. Then after shaking the bottle, I applied the thread locker to both parts. I lift the flywheel up on the crank and get the first bolt started. Then I move the flywheel around to line up the next bolt opposite the first bolt. And while the flywheel is still loose, I wiggle it around and get all the other bolts started. Now I'm screwing down the bolts hand tight so the flywheel sits flat on the crankshaft. The flywheel bolts need to be tightened in several stages in a crisscross pattern, just as you do when you tighten wheel nuts. Then I install my new special tool to hold the flywheel still. I'm tightening the nut on the back, but with only one point of attachment, it's not triangulated, so it's not perfect, even though it's the same as Honda's special tool. In the future, I'll modify this tool so it has a second point of attachment onto the block, which will make it more stable. Using a short ratchet handle, I'm making sure all the bolts are snug up against the flywheel. Now I'll tighten all the bolts with a torque wrench in three stages in a crisscross pattern. Firstly, I'll tighten to 35 Newton meters. Now I'll tighten to 70 Newton meters. In the final stage of tightening to 104 Newton meters. So that turned out really well. The special tools I made were fun to make and they made it possible to tighten all the bolts to their exact torque settings. In the next episode, I'll install the reconditioned gearbox 
So if you want to see how that goes, click notify and subscribe. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.